couple weeks up, or a couple days off, yeah. not weeks, obviously. Um, <laughs> but just, how was energy in practice after being Really able to good, play? really good. Uh, I think they really enjoyed the, the couple days off. Um, but I thought, uh, you know, we were practicing a little early than what we usually do, you know, their request. Um, thought they were, thought that we, we were, we got up and down. You know, we played, uh, you know, some of the things that we're uh, concerned with. Um, some of our pace in, in situations. Uh, Seattle's pace, you know, the way that they're playing, um, you know, their ability to space the floor. Uh, so we, you know, got, we had a great group of guys here. Okay. So it was a good, good day. Yeah. And part of that pace for Seattle obviously involves Jewel Lloyd, who needs to be his spine um, at yeah. the moment. Uh, what are the challenges and, you know, kind of game planning for her and obviously containing, trying to contain her to the next level? Yeah, and I think, you know, sometimes, you, you know, if you get over-focused on, on, on thinking that you're going to stop her, it'll be at the expense of leaving other really good players open, uh, and then they're going to get really great ball movement, and, and I've seen them, uh, they're, they're well coached, they're, you know, they're, they're good at what they do. Um, so with Jewel, you know, like, like you do what you can. You're not going to, certainly not going to shut her out. Um, try to make it difficult like you do with a lot of great players. Um, but but uh, we're not going to do things at the expense of uh, leaving other players you know, with easy opportunities. Um, do you have injury updates on Tom and Jess? Are either one of them able to practice? In they were, and as you know, uh, Jess is not here. Um, the... As you know, when a player returns from injury, especially their first day, they get in their reps, Diamond was in everything. Now you have to wait and see, you know, tomorrow. What, how does she feel tonight? Is she goes to bed, is she, you know, whatever pain, what happens tomorrow? So the part that we went through that she was in was good. Now what's her reaction to all of it? We don't know. So I, I hesitate to say she's back. But she did um, participate. She participated in practice. Yes. And then what do you think you've missed the most? I think really obvious, the you know, the full court abilities, the, the transition, uh, the rim attacks. Um, she, was, you know, she started to really get where she was understanding uh, when when the three ball was there. Uh, so she's you know, kind of got to knock the rust off again and kind of get back into it. Um, but she, you know, her athleticism, her length, her ability to get to a spot really, really stands out. Do you think mentally for her it helps that you can make an argument that that first half that Dallas game was the best half that she she had all season. Uh, she would tell you that. You know that's what you know. She was kind of bummed. She's like, that's the best I felt. Um, and so it's good that she tasted that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, she knows. I mean, I, I think for us to expect that that's will be her starting point would probably not be fair. To her. Um, but yeah, the fact that she tasted it and and and, it's, and I think there's a silver lining in a player watching. And you know, kind of being over on the sideline, kind of going, you know, like this should have happened, or this. And so now when we get out there, you know, you, you have that information. So um, she was a sponge, engaged. You know, sometimes when you're injured, you know, you, you tend to kind of maybe you know, float in the background. Um, she was engaged in everything, every timeout, every locker room uh, situation. Um, so I mean, I know she's excited to be back. I mean, you guys have been one of the best cooking teams so far this season. Yeah. How important do you think that is as a controller in terms of off ball movement to be able to at least help you find some more consistency? I mean, for, for this team, it's, it's huge. Um, you know, the group that we had, you know, with with uh, Tiff, you know, leading it for us, um, we were less of a pick and roll team. Um, and so cutting was our strength. And so that's kind of where we. Uh, now you, you, when you when LA comes in the game, now you've got more pick and roll. Or when Rachel comes in. The game, Got more pick and roll, uh, but we sort of identified pretty early on that pick and roll wasn't our jam as much as cutting, and and so we've tried to feature that uh, more of what we're doing. And and there were, you know, I was just saying this the other day to, to our staff um, when somebody said it was a, a, a back cut in like Connecticut, and I said that's our identity. That's good. You know, uh, you don't have to suddenly change and start to back cut. It's what we do well. Um, so they buy into it. Um, we believe in it, and, and I'm glad to see that. It's recognized as part of a good part of your identity. Well, I mean, now is it, you know, kind of a challenge of like staving off, okay, if Valet is starting, yep. then we can't just be sole pick and roll. If starting, we can't just be sole. Like, how do you find the middle ground? There? Well, I mean, what you always try to do is the players on the court doing what they do best, right? You might have certain lineups that you go, okay, now all pick and roll. Right, or maybe you have lineups that you go no pick and roll, right? And you just they just they know. Any element of making a defense stop you? Yeah, out. absolutely, absolutely. So I, I think we have, you know, at this point, we have pretty good recognition of those groups and what the play calls are for them. They have, they have the understanding, which is good. You know, they have their happy places that they that they find themselves in. Sticking with pick and roll, you know, mm -hmm. 
if I would have told you that Fee has been one of the most efficient ball handlers in pick and roll, yeah. you know, yeah. what would have your reaction to that been? Uh, we've worked on it, and I would say that makes me really happy because we've worked on that, and that was an evolution to her game that we wanted to put her in those situations. Uh, now it's unique because I think she's getting a lot of that as a power forward um, with a guard screening for her. And so that's creating nice matchups for her. Um, so I think that's a large part of it. I don't think it's because she's in a traditional pick and roll as a small forward. She's coming off, making reads. It's not that. Uh, it's, it's more receiving screens to power forward. And then for you guys, the the best defensive rebounding team in the league by percentage. Yeah. Um, does that give you confidence knowing that, you know, once this lineup kind of gets more familiarity and you kind of understand, okay, I'm on the floor with so and so, I know where they're going to be. Yeah. That once you get everybody back, that you guys can hopefully trend towards being a sub 100 defensive rating team? Uh, yeah, and we, we were. We had a nice stretch. Um, you know, we were winning games when, you know, I think they were 97, 98. That was our best stretch of the season defensively. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that, that there are, you know, the rebounding part, okay, good. I think the resistance in areas, uh, not letting a team get into their offense as fast, for example, Connecticut, head manning on a made basket, right up, uh, right up our backside, we're not ready to play. So I think our initial resistance, if that grows, then I think, then you're going to see the rating start to go down. If we can force three passes before an action gets to where they're attacking. That's going to help our, our, our defense rate, and that's, those are things that we've talked about. Um, we are good defensively in transition defense off of a miss. We are poor in transition defense off of a make. Uh, and that's just counterintuitive and just should not happen. Uh, and it's been brought to our attention, and we've been working on that for the better part of a week and a half. How did Diamond look today? She looked good. Yeah, I mean, I think she'll tell you, you know, like, like Diamond would. I mean, she, she wants it to go perfectly and wants to feel exactly like she was feeling. Um, but anybody that was in the gym would go, she looked really good. Yeah. Your yeah. sense that you kind of want to take it slow with her? Are you on at the point where it's like, okay, you can feel comfortable with trying to get her back into it? Yeah. I mean, I think that's between the player and trainer and medical staff. Uh, they've worked so hard and they've spent a lot of time together kind of going through everything. Um, I think if Diamond's ready, I'm ready to have her for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then for you just to be able to see Dorka go against players like NECA yeah. play like she did in the fourth yeah. quarter or that yeah. Sparks game, yeah. um, you know, go against players like AT and well, that's actually did a nice job night. on Thomas, yeah. Um, yep. Just how critical is that for her to be able to go against those types of players this early in Asia too, like this yeah. early in the season? I mean, in her career too, right? Like, um, this is what we've talked about for this season, things that we want to accomplish. It's things like that, those experiences, those difficult experiences and learning from them. Um, and then what we're trying to couple that with is determining an offensive identity and, and what, what she can bring to the table. So we're, we're still in the infancy stages uh, of that part of it, but defensively she's really proven to be um, pretty helpful to us. Go ahead. Yeah. You're so nice. <laughs> and keep deferring. <laughs> um, regarding some of the, I guess, offensive limitations that you had talked about, some of the narrowing to if he says just the yeah. number one option. Yeah. Like, is there any clarity as to like, it's still early in the season, is there any clarity as to what would alleviate that? I thought to Nafisa, she said, it's just about sort of trying to get them more involved maybe. Yeah. Or well, I, I mean, I think if you particularly look at the Connecticut game, um, you have players that are, that are relatively open, wide open in some instances that, you know, you have to make shots. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the only way to, to get attention off of fee. Um, I've been through years where you have, you know, Lindsey Whale and Simone Augustus, Maya Moore, Becca Brunson, Sylvia Fowles, and in 2018 they said anybody, any of those other four could shoot except Sylvia Fowles, right? And so it's not, an, it's not an indictment of this team, it's an indictment of more choices that a team will say any player other than Fee. Okay, so it, it's not because those players aren't good enough, but those players have to step up yeah. and, and they have to, you know, to be able to like anything, I mean, you got to help. You got you got to help Fee, uh, and those are the nights that Fee does really well. Is when everyone else is, is able to. How do you get them involved? Um, you know, depending on who it is, uh, certainly understand how to get LA involved, Rachel involved. I think K Mac has to, from a mindset standpoint, uh, has to get back to more of an assassin mindset. I think she's been a little more hesitant. Uh, maybe the shots aren't falling as much as she she wants right now, um, but she can't take less shots. She's got to take more shots. Uh, and, and I think we can we can attack 
we can get in the paint more than what we do. Um, so we, we spent a fair amount of time on uh, the opportunities we have for closeouts to, to be able to attack them. Mm -hmm. well, there's some very poor closeouts in the Connecticut game, and we just did not exploit it. Um, that will lead to easier baskets for all the other players. And so uh, I don't think it's any one magical, hey, run these plays for these players and poof, you solve your problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's limitations, I think, uh, outside of feet. Uh, I think it's just more of continuing to a uh, variety for fee. Um, and, you know, ultimately, you know, the other, the other players on the floor with her being able to make the, the easy plays, you know, the simple stuff. I have a non-basketball question. Okay. <laughs> um, I know uh, later on today, a team is participating in the Pride Parade yeah. um, as, as usual. Yeah. Um, and Twin Cities Pride has grown so much throughout the last you know, couple of decades. And the yeah. leagues have been such an essential part of, of that growth. Mm -hmm. um, so how important is it uh, you know, for you as you know, sort of the, the head of the organization to yeah. be sure that the links are at the forefront of that participation and being you know, part of, of the growth in, within the community? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, the... Minneapolis Pride is one of the largest in the country, one of the most attended, well-run in the country. Um, the Minnesota Lynx, since its inception, has uh, been a part of Minneapolis Pride, and so we're just carrying on, um, you know, the, the torch, so to speak, of, um, you know, being leaders in our community, um, you know, being at the forefront of, of diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, I think for for our group. Um, days like these are, are, are special because we're sharing it with the community. It's not very often. Uh, yeah, we have social media, and that sort of thing. There's other things you can do. But this is one of the ways that like we're a part of it. We're a part of the fabric of the community in this celebration. Uh, and so our leadership is, is on display uh, in a way that I think is awfully meaningful. Any further questions? Just, just confirm AP did practice as well? She, uh, she did not. No, oh, she did no, not. no, she's out. Yeah. Okay. And do you have any type of timetable for when you hope to see her back in the practice? I don't. Um, that's, that's uh, you know, I think that's maybe my, uh, from a frustration standpoint for a trainer is you can give timelines. Um, he doesn't like timelines. <laughs> right? Because if he doesn't meet the timeline, you know, then I'm going, what the hell, Chuck? You know? So I don't have a timeline. Okay. And it's not typical. Um, you know, we might have an idea of what an injury could take. Yeah. But, the, but each also, player is different. It's kind of a rare case, too, I think, it seems like. In what way? Sprint one ankle and then sprint the other ankle. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, I mean, historically for her, I mean, ankle's been a problem. So, you know, meaning it's not, it's so like if somebody else, and I don't want to really put somebody else's name out there, if I sprain my ankle and you sprain your ankle, my recovery is going to look different than yours right. just because my body is different. Maybe I've been through more ankle sprains. Maybe I have laxity. You know, maybe you don't. You know what I mean? Right. So no, you can't sure. just say ankle sprain, this is what it's going to be. Sure. Um, and so each case is different, and Chuck is not giving me a timeline. <laughs> That's the bottom line. <laughs> how, how is she doing with this whole process of being out sidelines? I think like anybody. Else? I mean, AP spent a fair amount of her time, you know, in their three seasons, you know, doing this. You know, so this is not uncharted territory for her. So she's learned, learned the gig. Um, I think ultimately any player who's injured is trying to get away from Chuck as fast as they can um, <laughs> because of all that they have to go through, you know, um, that, that's said in, obviously in an endearing way. <laughs> so. Thanks, Cheryl.